Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show, we talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about Fear the Walking Dead, Season 8, Episode 4. Great episode. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Okay, so first and foremost, this storyline is kind of years in the making in so many regards. You know, it's like we're talking OG Walking Dead because... Obviously, Morgan and Dwayne were the first people Rick met when when he woke up, you know, and so it's so poetic that this storyline would kind of be, you know, it all kind of comes a little full circle for Morgan as he tries to clear himself of the past, something he's let stay for so many years, as he even said, like, yeah, I waited too long, I waited 10 years to kind of do something about it, so... The fact is that Morgan tried to come back home. He tried to put his boy to rest, but he couldn't. Like, the trauma of it. And I, I understand, too, that it is, like, you know, it is something that said later on, like, oh, Morgan should just kind of let this go, but he can't. Because this trauma has been a part of him. It's been deep down inside of him. It's been something that's been there. Even when he pushes it deep down inside, it's always been, I think, a motivating factor in a lot of the decisions he made. I didn't even think about it at the time, but it's like, of course... Like, cause I, I, cause I know in the first episode of the season, like King County, County, I didn't remember King County, but I knew Dwayne and I was like, that probably had, the fact is the names were scrolling on the wall. I was like, it has to be a situation of like, it has to be like his home and stuff, which it was. But I think you could also say like, that's why he did what he did with Mo because of like the fear of what happened, the fear of not being able to protect your own child motivated that. And so it's like, it's it's been there, it's ingrained in like a part of why he's done what he's done. It's every step of his journey, it's been played or haunted by the, this is a ghost that's haunted him for so long, The that mistake that's haunted him for so long. And so he wanted to correct that. And obviously, it's interesting when Grace shows up, but she didn't show up by accident. She got the coded message, but Morgan's like, I didn't send that to you because it was actually Mo. She figured out the message, figured out King County and everything. It's like, yeah, you're smarter than you have any right to be, you know? But she kind of parent traps. It's not exactly, but obviously, to some extent, she kind of parent traps her parents, you know? But it's also that thing of, yeah, it's just what it's like to kind of be in trouble with your parents. But either way, Morgan needs to do this whole situation with Dwayne. And even, um, because obviously Mo doesn't know. And so Grace is like, right, um, Jenny and Dwayne, it's like his wife and son. And he ends up telling them the story of kind of what ended up happening about, once again, his his biggest mistake was for him that haunts him. It's if he had killed Jenny when he was supposed to, because it wasn't even Jenny anymore, but he couldn't bring himself to do it. Even for Dwayne, she saw him at one point in time and it was already too late. She was already on um, top of him, so... I think they've shifted the story a little bit, or maybe it's just like we have a greater context for it. Because Morgan talked about it a little bit, but he's never gone into great detail about it. So, the way Morgan, you know, I don't know if this is a thing of like, like I said, they're retconning it, or maybe Morgan's just very, like, gotten in way more detail. But, like, my memory of it was, like, he said Dwayne saw his mom and kind of ran out there to her and then got bitten. That was kind of my thought. Like, I think that's how he explained it to Rick all those years ago. But maybe it was just, like maybe it is applicable in this regard because he was like they were clearing a house the door was open a little bit and he probably saw his mom and so it probably still played out that exact way but um morgan had the like he still could never bring himself to go back into the house to look for him and obviously extenuating circumstances show up obviously dwight and sherry show up but they're here to get him because that's the only way they can make sure their son's okay and it's like right you kind of sold us out the padre all those years ago to protect your child it's like you know so it's like morgan kind of was like a little bit of a catalyst for like everything to go down the way it did so you know just like madison's trying to make up for the past so is morgan In this particular case, trying to uh, erase um, some ghosts that have been haunting him, like I said, for a very, very long time. And the sad thing is, Padre believes Morgan's here for, like, weapons or some backup. Like, he's trying to build up a resistance or something. It's like, no, Morgan did come here to really settle the past, but none of the other people believed him. Like, Sherry and um, 
Dwight were willing to because they had their own demons in their past. Like the sanctuary stuff has it's been something that they've they resolved. Obviously, they're not aware of the whole Negan thing. Um, and where that storyline has kind of gone, but um, it does make you wonder in like Dead City. Having not seen the trailer for it, do not want to see it or hear anything about it because once again, I've not finished The Walking Dead. I I need to I need to get on top of that this weekend or something. But because of that, I don't know if those characters are going to interact in any shape or form in Dead City or not. No, that is all the way in New York and everything, so who knows? But either way. Um, but they've they've kind of dealt with that pain and that I mean, but it's still it's still there, it's still a driving force. Those wounds don't go away. They don't heal easily. They've kind of scarred over at this point in time. So they understand like mistakes of the past and wishing things were different. Wish you had done something different. <clears throat> Especially because to get away from Dwight and Sherry, Morgan, Grace, and Mo hidden. Him and that, him and Dwight. I mean, him and uh, Dwayne's house, and it's like right, like being in a place that is so intertwined with so much of your uh, your past. Even like the walls uh, being covered in clear, clear, because that's what he would say all the time. Because he even told them, like, I was not in a good place after what happened to Dwayne. I kind of went into a trance. I don't remember much. I don't know if he even remembers he ran into Rick and them. I think he he might remember that, but like because he ran, I want to say that might have been season three when he ran into Rick. Because remember, Rick would always send him out the message on the radio, but sadly Morgan never got those messages. And so it's like, right, we found somewhere, but Morgan never got it. it that might have also been at the time it already happened with Dwayne, so he might have been in a trance at that time. So that's extra reason why he never got the messages. But either way, and obviously after his encounter with Morgan uh, with the was eventually he met Eastman and kind of set him on the, it's like, it's just, when you look back and think about Morgan's journey over the course of the show, the pain, the trauma, everything that he's been through, everything that he's lost, you know, over the course of things. But I mean, Morgan's always been the person who lost some things along the way, was able to fight to get them back essentially, but still lost just as much along the way, even there too. So, I mean, especially when you can join that with, like, Grace's point of, like, I know what it's like to bury the dead. She's like, because, and I was wondering why she was specifically referencing, because I felt like a lot of, I mean, and it's not something she talks about, because I guess, it's not like it's buried in the past, but it's just like, right, we, we have to move forward. She kind of dealt with that trauma the moment they've kind of, like, fully accepted Mo was theirs. Um, not just the responsibility of we're looking after, it's like, no, we are your parents now. Uh, but we also owe it to your biological parents, Isaac and Rachel, to kind of see that through as well. But the Athena of it all, like even with everything going on, she never referenced Athena. She said, I was like listening to this book on double speed. I don't know if that was more so supposed to be in correlation to Athena or more about the radiation thing, which we'll get to later. I guess it was more so the radiation thing, but I... It's just her being like, hey, I'm listening to this on double speed because cause the whole point was I'm trying to – because, I right, I forgot. That was her thing of like she was trying to listen to all – and read all these books and hear all these books before she died. So I think that's what the more direct correlation is. But obviously last time she thought she was dying of radiation poison and she was pregnant. So, But – um. Which makes this whole thing, like, as as we're breaking everything down, it just makes it that much more tragic. That was, I was kind of scared, like, how this episode was going to play out. Because I'm like, oh, it's too much happy. Like, oh, it's all going to be okay. It's like, this universe, it's rarely ever okay before things, like, really hit the fan. And lo, lo, lo and behold, they did. But either way. I, I do like the breadcrumbs. Like I said, they were they were kind of setting up throughout the episode with Grace and with Morgan. Like, kind of the reveals and everything. So... But um, even the whole thing about like the it's a bittersweet story about the tomato soup about like right Dwayne and their dog and uh, how the dog would get too close to a skunk but like Dwayne didn't want to be separated from the dog the dog didn't want to be separated from Dwayne despite it stinking which I love that being a recurring element throughout this episode but it's like right the bathing in tomato soup makes you uh, smell a cross between like what was it like a wet dog and something else. You know, and that's why they have so many like tomato soup cans in the house and stuff like that because Dwayne couldn't be bothered. Like he didn't like, despite them struggling for food, he didn't want to eat that because he probably wanted to keep it. It might have been like after their dog died, it might have been like a reminder or just in case, you know, type of situation. But um, 
it is kind of the sad thing of in Morgan's attempt to bury the past, he was repeating it because it's like, right, that it, it is this thing of like, right, Jenny and um, Dwayne and then like obviously the Grace and Mo of it all. It is kind of like there are parallels and Grace was trying to make that point. It's like you should have taken Sherry and um, Dwight's deal where they were going to let you go. We're going to find walkers that look enough like you that we mess up their faces. So it's like, right, me and Al did it uh, when it came to Jenny. It's like, yeah, but it like it. It didn't work, you know, it didn't work on Virginia. It's like, yeah, but, you know, we could try it again. And it's like, but Morgan doesn't want to be responsible for, like, what could end up happening to their son, Finch. So, it's just Morgan's, Morgan is one of those characters who has, like, the weight of the world on his shoulders. So many regrets and stuff. And it is very poetic that, you know, it's like, right, getting back the rifle also that Rick gave him all those years ago. It's just like... Yeah, a man named Rick Grimes gave me this to me, and I never used it. But now it's like, and even gracing, like, Rick gave it to you for a reason, so it's time to use it. I love it. It's like, right, let's cut through these walkers and try and get away. We'll avoid Sherry and Dwight. But the problem is, uh, which I also, really quickly, I love them kissing, and she's like, what was that for? It's like, oh, you've never seen two people kiss before? She's like, no. Mo's like, no, and I don't ever want to see it again. And even when Grace kisses her on the cheek, it's just like, can we just, like, go kill some carrions now? It's like, I don't I don't like this. It's weird. Um, but when the, when it all went down, I was like, oh, my God, it's Ginny's going to be in the crowd, isn't she? And she was, but it's not really Ginny. It was Morgan's projection of just, like, his trauma like, he couldn't bring himself to pull the trigger, and obviously, um, Dwight and Sherry caught up to them, and took them to the house, it's like, right, you want to finish this, then we'll, we'll help you do it, and that way we can prove it to Shrike that this is really why you're here, but when he went there, he saw, like, a dead walker, but it was a woman, I was like, is that supposed to be, I was wondering, because it has been 10 years in it, like, uh, I was like, is that supposed to be, because I was like, that's not definitely not Dwight, but I'm like, is that supposed to be Jenny? And I think it, it, it's heavily implied like it was because he was looking at the body and then he covered it up. So definitely, was, but once again, he doesn't remember what happened in that time frame. It's all kind of a blur to him. But it's like Dwight's not here. I mean, uh, Dwayne's not here. Do I keep saying Dwight when I meant to say Dwayne in, in these past couple seconds? Maybe if I've been, been making it a mistake, sorry. Um, but Dwayne wasn't there, so it's like, what happened to him? It's like, right, he must be gone. I waited too long, and now my son's out there, and I have no idea where he might be. Um, did someone else have this exact circumstance? I can't remember. I was like, didn't, I don't remember. I was like, didn't Aaron have this issue with his husband? Or did he kill his husband? I don't remember now off the top of my head. I can't remember. Um, but just the circumstances of I couldn't, um, like I said, I could have sworn someone else had that circumstance of they missed their opportunity and the walker got away. And it's like, I have no idea if, um, maybe it's specifically Morgan I was thinking about. I could have sworn there was another character that had that exact same kind of similar circumstance. But it's like, yeah, my son's out there, and it's like all these years later, who knows how far he could have gone. Like, he might be soaring in the, in the county, or he might not even be here at all. So it's just like any attempts to bury the past, to give my son a proper rest, it's gone because I waited too long. I couldn't bring myself to come back here. And so Shrike wanted him dead because it's like, right, Morgan must be lying about um, what he's really out here for. And the sad thing is, he wasn't. And he was really content with dying because it's like, right, I dragged you know, Grace and Mo out here, and I couldn't even do what was necessary. Sherry and um, Dwight weren't going to let Morgan die because they were like, right, we know what it's like to uh, have the past be something you want to forget. So they wanted to help him out. It's like, we're not going to murder you in cold blood. And so when it's all said and done, they end up, Getting Finch to escape from the island and slip onto a boat that's going to be leaving in 20 minutes so that he can meet up with them on the mainland. And obviously we find out the truth about Grace at the same time where it's like, all right, Mo's still trapped in the house with those walkers. We need to go help her. Um, Grace talks about the fact is 
all these years and why she kept being like, why we wasted so many time, so much time. It's because she's only got a, she found out a few months ago that her radiation is like, the radiation has been there the entire time, but now it's finally, finally caught up to her and it's different this time. It's not a, oh, I was, um, I'm not pregnant again. It's, it is it is the situation of the radi radiation caught up to me. I guess you could say like, because the whole point was also like, Athena kind of gave her more time. And I'm probably sure that you probably like strikes a chord too where, right, the borrowed time, all these years Athena gave me and I we, we kind of wasted them not being together, being as a family. So, because Morgan had, had and uh, Grace had told Mo that they ran into each other from time to time, but obviously they never spent a lot of time together over these past years, so... But it's also like, right, we can't let Padre know how important we are to each other. Very much like the whole Dwight and Sherry of it all. Because it's like, hey, can't let anyone know that Sherry's son, Dwight's the father. That that would be another thing that Padre would have used against some type of situation. So, when it's all said and done, um, Morgan's extra motivated. Like, right, um, Grace doesn't have much time. We just found our way full kind of back to each other, so we got to make this time count. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to go save Mo. And even though he's motivated to do it, he still was reluctant to pull the trigger because he sees Jenny in every walker, but he eventually pushes past that and shoots them. And we see that Dwayne is chained up to the roof. And you see it's like, right, stay here. It's all that. It's kind of the messaging because it's probably like some of the last stuff he ever said to Dwayne. is stuck in his head thinking the house was clear when it wasn't. He thought he had cleared out the walkers. He left the door open. He told Dwayne to stay there, but he didn't. So it's like all these things, the last words, the last things in his head were what he was kind of stuck on repeat writing everywhere. And so when Mo goes up to the... um attic and kind of get stuck there and Dwayne's walker is like getting close to him Morgan kind of pieces it together in his fugue state he finally did kill Jenny but he just doesn't remember it so she was there and he brought his son back home and he chained him up and it's just he did he because he, he couldn't bring himself to do it but all those memories flashing in front of him Mo in danger it's like I can't make the same mistake again I've got to protect my child and he does what he couldn't do back then in an attempt to save Mo not in in his process of saving Mo he ends up putting down Dwayne so it's like I'm finally able to bury the past in so many regards let's say he killed Jenny years ago he just doesn't remember that he did it he thought Jenny was still out and about because I oh I never pulled the trigger on her but it's like yeah you did but you you were so the trauma blocked the memories. That was your way of trying to like protecting yourself from like the anger and hurt you felt towards yourself. But it's like he brought Dwayne back home. And so now able to kind of give them both a proper burial, kind of both literally and figuratively burying the past. But um, it's like, right, they've been given this new opportunity together. So what are we going to, you know, it's like, we're going to help out Madison and Daniel take back the island and help all of those children get reunited with their families. Once again, it isn't just Madison whose battle this is. It's also Morgan's. And sadly, um, it's not, I was thinking, like, I was like, oh, God, it's going to be, um, Mo, they got bit just like Finch, but it's like, no, and it's Grace. It's like, geez, it's like Grace didn't already have like and like a, a shortened uh time frame now, like we're expediting that even more now. So, luckily, Dwight and Sherry met up with Finch, but they meet up with Morgan. And uh, when he shows up with Grace and Mo, and it's like, right, she got bit because they hadn't even told Mo about her limited time because it's like right we just got back together as a family let's wait before we tell her and you're just like jesus so that's also going to be probably triggering for well and twofold for june because it's going to be well and probably also for daniel because it's like well she's dying of radiation and the bite but it's also like well charlie died of like radiation i mean once again we don't fully know charlie's story at this point but like i said i'm sure there's going to be an episode dedicated to that or something or potentially um, I mean, once again, who who knows, like, considering, like, how, like I said, it's only shorter by three episodes, uh, but it's still, like, it is a shorter season, so who who knows how that, wait, not even three episodes, four. In my head, I'm, I'm thinking 13, no, it's like 12 episodes, so, 
Yeah, it's shorter by four episodes, so that can make quite a difference in what stories they end up telling in this final season. But either way, they're going to try and meet up with June. She is the one that is kind of working on a cure, which it, it is working for Finch, so maybe it can work for Grace. But the problem is, she's already died from radiation, and we're going to be doubling that down. So that's definitely going to be an issue. So we'll have to wait and see how that kind of ultimately ends up playing out. But for Grace, it's like she's going to hold on. It's like they... Um, had to find a re both of them had to in their own respect and you know Morgan had to find a reason to keep living and so and he kind of helped Grace find a reason to keep living so we both have a reason also to keep living for Mo's sake you know she just got us both back so we need to do this so Grace is promising she's going to try and stay alive but I mean sadly that might be a promise she can't keep I mean maybe in the near future she'll be able to too, but I mean, maybe in the long long run of things, she won't be able to keep that. I, I don't know. We'll we'll have to ultimately wait and see how all this takes uh, plays out going forward into the next episode. So, but really, that's all I wanted to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, love light to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and good bye.